You breathe in sharp cold air while your eyes open to the glare of the sun with the blue sky behind it. You find yourself laying in a small wooden boat. The sides seem to be splintering. You sit up and feel the boat leaning in the water and your cold wet clothes against your skin. You look around and see a blur of white and green. You realise you've reached shore. You blink and shiver a couple of times while you lean over the edge of the boat, feeling the side press under your arm and the cold of the water on your fingertips. You stand up with a surprising amount of energy, making sure the boat doesn't tip, and you set your first foot into the shallow water, landing in the soft, fluffy sand below. Both legs get in, and now you feel the water halfway up both of your calves. As you walk out, dragging the boat, you see large black rocks about as tall as your knees leading to the foliage floor. Instead of stepping on the sand, you choose to use the rocks until your legs dry. You get up on one and realise just how warm they are and just how cold you felt. One of them was almost flat, slightly uncomfortable, but it was good enough for you to lie down on and feel the heat thawing your hands and stopping the frequent shivers in your spine. You lay there, moving your head to the right to get the sun out of your eyes. You focus on the sand and its small details. It's gritty and multicoloured. A small area of sand moves. It stays still for a moment and you wait. You slightly sit up, readjusting yourself with your right elbow, somehow curious of what it is. And then a small grey crab huddles out from underneath. You focus on your body and keeping it still. You feel the pressure of the uneven rock below you and the slightly swaying wind. The crab starts moving closer, stopping halfway up a little rock that was in its path. It adjusts itself a bit and starts to filter the sand with its tiny claws. You feel a gush of wind hit you and it nearly tips you over, but you balance yourself. You feel the cold blow through your shirt and you notice that your legs have dried. You wiggle your toes knowing that no sand will stick to you. Looking back you see the crab is gone. Your eyes surge into the foliage, now curious of what you will find. You get up and walk towards the palm trees. Your hands start moving the branches out of your way and your feet feel that the ground is made up of damp leaves with a few sticks hiding underneath. The trees further in are covered in a dark green moss. Their trunks have grown in scattered directions and in amongst all the leaves there are patches of orange. There are tree trunks spread evenly everywhere you look, except for far over to your right. You move towards a small clearing, taking large steps over logs and annoyingly placed sticks. As you get closer, the smell of salt in the air fades and you see the other side of what is slowly revealed as a river. The distorted mirror image of the sky partially reflects in it. Soft plants with an overflow of small white flowers dangle over the edges. They're lined up all along the riversides as far as you can see. The air is still and it smells sweet now. You start walking along the edge deeper into the forest. You look at all the smooth pebbles in the river, some large enough to cause a ripple in the flow of water. You feel the soft moss under your feet. The warmth of the sun shines in your direction onto the back of your neck and you stand there for a bit, soaking it up and appreciating it. Off in the distance you hear something move. Looking over you see about five little animals moving around up a slight incline. Walking around the branches that block your view, you recognise that they're squirrels and that they're pulling at a plant. You start walking over to it, but they spot you and dart away. The plant has some type of red berries on it. You don't feel hungry, so you just kneel down and sit next to it. Moving it about and looking around, you pick a whole bunch off and hold one out in your hand in front of you. A couple of squirrels come over to you, not really sure if they should be concerned. They all keep a safe distance except for one. This squirrel is quite small and apart from its stereotypical brown fur, it has a darker brown spot on its left side in the shape of a snowman. It wiggles its nose while looking at the berry. They take it out of your hand very gently and start nibbling it. You walk back over to the river and sit there in the busy silence of nature, appreciating all that it brings.